Hey everybody, welcome back to the Here to See channel. I have another Here journal for you. Here to See, focused on sharing pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge, understanding the difficult, and instructions for a better life. 2 Samuel chapter 17. We're reading through the entire Bible book of 2 Samuel, a chapter at a time, and doing a Here Journal video on each chapter. Here journaling is a method many find edifying to their personal relationship with the Lord. Check out replicate.org to learn more about Here Journaling. But now let's read and listen to 2 Samuel chapter 17 in the New Living Translation from the New Version Bible app. Then I'll share my Here Journal with you. Chapter 17 now Ahithophel urged Absalom, Let me choose twelve thousand men to start out after David tonight. I will catch up with him while he is weary and discouraged. He and his troops will panic, and everyone will run away. Then I will kill only the king, and I will bring all the people back to you as a bride returns to her husband. After all, it is only one man's life that you seek. Then you will be at peace with all the people. This plan seemed good to Absalom and to all the elders of Israel. Hushai counters Ahithophel's advice. But then Absalom said, Bring in Hushai the archite. Let's see what he thinks about this. When Hushai arrived, Absalom told him what Ahithophel had said. Then he asked, What is your opinion? Should we follow Ahithophel's advice? If not, what do you suggest? Well, Hushai replied to Absalom, This time Ahithophel has made a mistake. You know your father and his men, they are mighty warriors. Right now, they are as enraged as a mother bear who has been robbed of her cubs. And remember that your father is an experienced man of war. He won't be spending the night among the troops. He is probably already hidden in some pit or cave. And when he comes out and attacks, and a few of your men fall, there will be panic among your troops, and the word will spread that Absalom's men are being slaughtered. Then even the bravest soldiers, though they have the heart of a lion, will be paralyzed with fear. For all Israel knows what a mighty warrior your father is, and how courageous his men are. I recommend that you mobilize the entire army of Israel, bringing them from as far away as Dan in the north and Beersheba in the south. That way you will have an army as numerous as the sand on the seashore, and I advise that you personally lead the troops. When we find David, we'll fall on him like dew that falls on the ground. Then neither he nor any of his men will be left alive. And if David were to escape into some town, you will have all Israel there at your command. Then we can take ropes and drag the walls of the town into the nearest valley until every stone is torn down. Then Absalom and all the men of Israel said, Hushai's advice is better than Ahithophel's, for the Lord had determined to defeat the council of Ahithophel, which really was the better plan, so that he could bring disaster on Absalom. Hushai warns David, to escape. Hushai told Zadok and Abiathar the priests what Ahithophel had said to Absalom and the elders of Israel, and what he himself had advised instead. Quick, he told them, find David and urge him not to stay at the shallows of the Jordan River tonight. He must go across at once into the wilderness beyond. Otherwise he will die and his entire army with him. Jonathan and Ahimeaz had been staying at Enrogel so as not to be seen entering and leaving the city. Arrangements had been made for a servant girl to bring them the message they were to take to King David. But a boy spotted them at Enrogel, and he told Absalom about it. So they quickly escaped to Bahurim, where a man hid them down inside a well in his courtyard. The man's wife put a cloth over the top of the well and scattered grain on it to dry in the sun, so no one suspected they were there. When Absalom's men arrived, they asked her, Have you seen Ahimeaz and Jonathan? The woman replied, They were here, but they crossed over the brook. Absalom's men looked for them without success and returned to Jerusalem. Then the two men crawled out of the well and hurried on to King David. Quick, they told him, cross the Jordan tonight. And they told him how Ahithophel had advised that he be captured and killed. So David and all the people with him went across the Jordan River during the night, and they were all on the other bank before dawn. When Ahithophel realized that his advice had not been followed, he saddled his donkey, went to his hometown, set his affairs in order, and hanged himself. He died there and was buried in the family tomb.
David soon arrived at Maenaim. By now, Absalom had mobilized the entire army of Israel and was leading his troops across the Jordan River. Absalom had appointed Amasa as commander of his army, replacing Joab, who had been commander under David. Amasa was Joab's cousin. His father was Jether, an Ishmaelite. His mother, Abigail, daughter of Nahash, was the sister of Joab's mother, Zeruiah. Absalom and the Israelite army set up camp in the land of Gilead. When David arrived at Maenaim, he was warmly greeted by Shobai, son of Nahash, who came from Rabbah of the Ammonites, and by Maker, son of Amiel from Lodibar, and by Barzillai of Gilead from Rogalim. They brought sleeping mats, cooking pots, serving bowls, wheat and barley, flour and roasted grain, beans, lentils, honey, butter, sheep, goats, and cheese for David and those who were with him. For they said, You must all be very hungry and tired and thirsty after your long march through the wilderness. And that was Second Samuel chapter 17 in the New Living Translation from the Version Bible app. Now, for my hair journal... First, the highlight, 2 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 14. Verse 14. Then Absalom and all the men of Israel said, Hushai's advice is better than Ahithophel's, for the Lord has determined to defeat the counsel of Ahithophel, which really was the better plan, so that he could bring disaster on Absalom. So, what's my explanation? The Lord determined to defeat the council of Ahithophel so that he could bring disaster on Absalom. So, how does that apply to us today? How awful it must have been for David, his own son out to kill him and willing to go to war to do it. He must have been filled with sorrow as well as anger. We too can experience times when we are unfairly persecuted, sometimes even by people that we once trusted. We must follow the Lord and not our own thinking as he will protect and avenge us. Luke chapter 6 verse 27 But I say to you who hear love your enemies do good to those who hate you James 4 7 Submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you Isaiah 54 17 No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me, declares the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Romans 12, 19, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Exodus 23:22. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Psalm 25, verse 2. O oh my God, in you I trust, let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. 2 Peter 2.9 Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from the trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. Colossians 2.8 See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. So, what's my response? Thank you, Lord, for this amazing relationship I share with you. Help me to forgive anyone that has trespassed over me. 
I strive to abide in you as you abide in me, following you faithfully and obediently forever. Help me, Lord, to resist any temptation that would lead me away from you. I pray for anyone who does not know you, that they will accept you as their Lord and Savior. Amen, amen. Now, how about you? Why don't you try some here journaling? Highlight, explain, apply, respond. You'll be so glad you did. Comment below, won't you? Share your experiences with us. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, read the Gospel of John chapter 3 to learn about His forgiveness and talk to God about it. Oh, it's so wonderful to talk and hear from God. Seek Him now. God bless.